Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. 10 games benchmarked on the Ryzen 5 2400G, the 4 core, 8 thread APU from AMD, Vega 11 graphics included. This is a comparison video where I'm going to show you the performance of the integrated graphics in the Ryzen 5 2400 versus adding a dedicated graphics card. So there's going to be a bunch of benchmark results and two sets of charts one in the middle and one at the end of the video. I've got them split into two groups of five. I'll explain that in a minute. Now, this computer was previously built on this channel. Originally, it was built with a Ryzen 3 2200G, but in the process of doing so, I upgraded it to a Ryzen 5. Eight threads means it has more room for growth, better uh, performance in modern AAA games, especially when you add a graphics card, more per core performance, higher clock speed, and 30% better integrated graphics. This CPU is currently available for about $150, and the fact that it will play these games you're about to see and at playable frame rates is impressive. No graphics card required. What you need to do is make compromises on detail settings and resolution. So what I'm about to show you are two different sets of benchmarks at different detail settings and different resolutions, or rather render scales. Everything was run at 1080p resolution, but five of the 10 games, I mentioned I split them into two groups, five of the 10 games are run at what's called 50% render resolution. So the game's interface, the crosshairs, the text on the screen, all of that is crystal clear and sharp. The game runs at 1080p, but the internal render resolution is cut in half for the purpose of the polygons, etc., and it makes a huge difference in performance. The other five games I tested at full resolution, and so you get to see the difference between those two. Now, this graphics card here from ASRock, the RX 588 gigabyte card is currently available for under $200 in the United States. That is a phenomenal value for the money. Eight gigabytes of VRAM means it has plenty of room for game textures, high and even ultra detail at 1080p, if it has the performance, of course. And it's got enough performance to play all current games at 1080p, 60 frames per second or better. And it works very well in a system such as this. Now, I will link to that as well as the build video series down in the video description below to Amazon and Newegg. If you like this series, please consider using those links when shopping. It does support the channel. Some of you may say, wait a minute, why is there a GTX 1060 on the desk? Great question. Glad you asked. The GTX 1060 is plus or minus 10% about the same performance as an RX 580. Some games it's 5 or 10% faster, some games it's 5 or 10% slower. Depends upon whether the games are more AMD or NVIDIA optimized. If where you live, you have the opportunity to pick up a 6 gigabyte, at this point I wouldn't buy a 3 unless you're extremely budget limited, a 6 gigabyte GTX 1060, you can expect very similar performance numbers to what you're about to see in the RX 580. Everything here was tested on the 580, but the 1060 is pretty close. Now, some of you may be curious about the new RTX 2060 cards that just released. Are they similar to this? No, they're not. The RTX 2060 is similar to the Vega 56 cards. It's a whole other level of performance, 50 to 75% faster than what you're about to see. However, that is not as much CPU as I would like to see for those cards. These are really ideal for a four core, eight thread chip in the 3.7 to 3.8 gigahertz clock range, which is what that runs at. So if you have such a machine, or if you're putting together a Ryzen 5 1400, 1500X, 1600, 1600X, or the new 2600 or 2600X, any of those chips, then these would also be excellent choices. If you're going with a, a Vega 56 or an RTX 2060, I would strongly encourage you to step up to a Ryzen 7 to get the best performance from the latest games. And with that being said, let's get to the benchmarks. We start off our benchmarks with Dawn of War 3. Left-hand side of the screen is Vega 11, the integrated GPU. And on the right-hand side of the screen, we have the RX 580. Now, this benchmark's pretty quick, and we're going to do all five of these games back-to-back -back with the 50% render resolution on the Vega 11 and, of course, low detail. Now, these aren't the same detail settings, and that's, of course, going to produce very different results. The point here is to show what's playable as much as anything else. 
I could certainly set them to the same detail, but a 1080p 100% scale at high detail on the Vega 11 would be ridiculous. It would be, the performance would be absolutely terrible. And all you would learn is that it's a slideshow. And then frankly, what would be gained? Uh, many people would look at that and say, oh, well, it sucks. It doesn't play any games. It doesn't work. Well, it does work if you're willing to compromise. Here's Far Cry 5, a fairly recent AAA game, high levels of detail, playable frame rates on both setups, but you have to go from high detail at 100% scale to low detail at 50% scale to do it. It's doable, but if you look at the two side-by-side -side images, you can clearly tell there is far, far less detail on the Vega 11 side. In fact, right here, notice the smoke is missing completely. The effects are different. The foliage is different. It just the whole thing looks different. You see the water there. The water is more detailed. It's rippling more. Now, does that affect the gameplay? Can you play it at low detail 50%? Sure. But I think we can all agree that the game is much, much nicer looking at high detail and at 100% render scale. Now, here is For Honor. This benchmark I've used many times, and I've gotten very little feedback from any of you as to whether you like seeing this game. Please let me know in the comments below, do you still want to see For Honor included or not? Now, what's interesting is it's playable on both. 50% scale, low detail. Notice we're about 60, 70 frames per second. But look at the instability of that frame rate. It is all over the place. It is jumpy and, to be completely honest, terrible. If you look on the right, look how smooth the frame rate. That's why I include those graphs. You can see how smooth and steady the frame pacing and delivery are. It's Game performance is not just about frame rates. Too many people look at charts and go, oh, well, they got 60 frames a second. I got 100 frames a second. It must be fine. No, because there's smoothness and frame pacing. How evenly are the frames delivered? Do you get a whole bunch of frames really quickly and then a big pause stutter delay and then a couple more frames, another stutter delay? Are the frames delivered smoothly or not. Now that's smoothly. You can see on the left-hand side, that was very smoothly only there at the very end. So that's something else to watch for when you watch these kinds of videos. Now here we have Strange Brigade, a game I've only covered a couple of times, although I did play this at E3 and it was actually kind of fun. I played it for about 20 minutes, did a video on it separately. If you just look at this in passing, you might think that the details are pretty close to each other. Some of the same effects, the glow, the highlights, the trees, the branches. It kind of looks the same. That The 50% scale and low detail are not as bad as they are on some of the other games. Now, if you pause it, that's when you'll actually start to pick out some of the details. If you, if you just pause the video for a second, like right there, and take a look, you'll see the detailed differences. I've frozen the video here, or actually slowed it down to 0.1% speed. Take a look at the water reflection. Take a look at the rocks. Take a look at the character and the detail on the shield and the armor. Now, these details don't affect the game itself. In fact, it frame jumped there because it's not paused. It's just way slowed down. But take a look at the purple explosion, or is that pink or purple? In any case, you can see the foliage in the background is far, far more detailed at 1080p high detail, 100% render resolution, as opposed to 1080p 50% low. Whether you care or not, well, that depends on whether you want to spend $180 buying a graphics card to put into your Ryzen 5 2400G. If you're okay with integrated graphics, take a look at the frame rates right now, 79 to 82. The truth of the matter is, this game is completely playable on integrated graphics, or at least Vega 11, if you're willing to make the quality detail sacrifice. So that's now back to normal speed, but I just wanted to pause it there so you had a chance without having to pause the YouTube video to take a look at the detail settings. Let me know in the comments section below whether or not you want me to pause some of these shorter benchmark runs right in the middle of them to give you a chance to compare them side by side without dealing with YouTube's compression of a frozen frame. I don't know. It, it certainly adds length to the video, and I don't want to make these videos longer than is necessary, but that's what the comment section is for, to let me know what you guys want to see. Now, this is the last game in the 50% scale collection of benchmarks. We'll get to the 100% in just a second. The Division. Now, The Division 2 is coming out, and when The Division 2 comes out, I will replace The Division with The Division 2, because I assume it will come with a built-in benchmark like this does, or at least I hope it does. The Division was an absolute blast to play, 
and it's not even terrible at low detail. This game holds up amazingly well. I mean, sure, if you look at the car windows, if you look at the texture pop-in and the distance of uh, details that are drawn, you can see the pop-in on the left-hand side as objects pop in due to the very low uh, viewable distance. Do keep in mind that these are using the built-in detail settings of the game. You can always go into the detail settings and manually adjust them. You can adjust view ranges, adjust shadows. You can adjust a variety of things sort of to suit your taste. What's the most important details to you? Having played and beaten this game completely, I can tell you an RX 580 would be wonderful at 1080p high detail to play this thing all the way through without any issues whatsoever. It's a blast. It's fun. The missions are interesting. The underground sections are interesting. The DLC is interesting. I really, really like The Division. So that brings us to the end of our first five games tested. I have got three benchmark charts for you. This is average frame rate. The blue bars are Vega 11, low detail, 50% render resolution. The red bars are the RX 580 eight gigabyte card, high detail, 100% render resolution. Now, generally, of course, the RX 580 is gonna be faster with the sole exception of Dawn of War 3, which was interesting, but of course the detail settings are way, way off. The next games I'm gonna show you are gonna show what happens when we have 100% render resolution, but still low detail on the Vega 11. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. I thought about including them here, but well, frankly, most of these games aren't playable at 100% scale. Here's the chart with the minimum frame rates. I really wanna make this point loud and abundantly clear. If you are flexible with detail settings, if you are flexible with resolutions, you can play games on integrated graphics in 2019. The Vega 11 graphics that come with the Ryzen 5 2400G are not spectacular compared to a dedicated graphics card. Of course, the RX 580 is monstrously faster, but if you turn those details down, yes, you can play Far Cry 5, you can play For Honor, you can play The Division, on integrated graphics in 2019. And then for completeness sake, here is the max frame rate, which are much, much, much higher, and I'm including them mostly because why not? Some of you like to see it. And with no further ado, let's get to the next five games. F1 2017 is the first game we're testing at 100% render resolution on both cards. Well, I say cards, Vega 11 is not really a card, but we'll just call it a card because it's easier. It isn't low detail, so the detail settings aren't the same, and you can see that in the real-time performance numbers. We're nearly 100 frames per second on the RX 580, whereas we're only about 50 or 60 frames per second on the Vega 11. Notice that the VRAM is different as well. Granted, there's only two gigs allocated for the VRAM there, but the detail settings, the textures, everything are much lower but it's still very, very playable either way. One interesting thing to note is that the RX 580 is not 100% utilized. There it's at 80, 83%, 88. It jumps up, it jumps down. We are in fact CPU limited, but not by much on the uh, Ryzen 5 2400G with an RX 580. It's a little bit, but it's not a huge amount. Now, granted the CPU is not at 100%, but again, remember cores and threads, four cores, eight threads, you, you can get 100% core usage, you will rarely get 100% thread usage when you're in games. You'll generally only get that 3D animation, video rendering, etc. And even then you don't always get 100%. But if you look at the CPU usage between these two runs, that just goes to show you what frame rate does to the CPU. The faster your frame rate, the more CPU you need. If you, for example, want 144 plus frames per second all the time in your games, then you want more clock speed, you want more CPU speed, you want more higher instructions per clock cycle. Frankly, you want Intel. Uh, Intel is faster than Ryzen. But if you're okay with between 60 to 100 frames per second and everything, and frankly, that's closer to 100 than 60 in most situations, then frankly, Ryzen's a much better value for the money. Now, the next game I'm gonna show you is Forza Horizon 4. And unfortunately, the MSI Afterburner overlay does not work on FH4. It, it just doesn't. It did in the beta test. It never has since the game is launched. I've tried running it full screen, windowed, borderless. I, I've searched and searched and tried all the various settings and the overlay has never worked in it since the game launched. So what can I say? 
Instead, I'm simply showing you the Vega 11 test here. While you don't get all of the nice detailed numbers, here's what you can see. 1080p, low detail. This game is still amazingly nice looking. Now it's not running at 60 frames per second, but it is running pretty nicely. It's 47, 48, 49 frames per second there. A little bit of stutter there, not too bad. This game really wants a little bit better computer in order to play. It'll play on this. You might want to lower the resolution to 900p there, rather than uh, 1080p if you want to get 60 frames per second. If you want closer to 100, then you'll have to lower it to 720p. Or you could buy yourself a graphics card because as you'll see from the benchmark chart in just a minute, this thing rocks on an RX 580. Next up, we have the older Forza Motorsport 7, and I'm human. I apologize, I had tested uh, Motor uh, Horizon 4 previously, and I didn't turn the overlay back on when I recorded it, and when I'm sitting here voicing this over, I have since changed the configuration of the machine, and it would not be an inconsiderable time and effort to go and change it around, reinstall the drivers and reconfigure it to re-record it, so I'm not going to. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I recorded the high detail, 100% scale without the MSI overlay, which is why that was there. But you saw the numbers, I just wanted to explain it. I'm including the recordings I have because frankly, I need to get on to the GTX 1060 versus RTX 2060 video, so I'm leaving it as it is. Likewise here, this just goes to show you that benchmarking and testing are perfect. When you see the numbers, they're fine. Uh, these numbers totally coincide with, with where they should be. The multiple benchmark runs all line up. Look at the CPU usage on the RX 580 here in Rainbow Six Siege on the right-hand side. Sometimes MSI goes a little bit funny and you have to reboot the whole system and relaunch everything and reset it up because notice it's not reading the video card at all. But look at the frame rate. It, it's working, it's running at its proper speed. That's the appropriate performance of an RX 580. It just didn't show. Now here we are in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Hey, look, MSI Afterburner is working again. I rebooted the system, what can I say? Like I said, I have since reconfigured this computer. I, some people might say, why don't you just go back and re-record those two benchmarks? I could, but we're looking at using up an entire morning's worth of time that could be better used testing the next generation of cards. So hopefully I'm showing you enough performance tests here. You can just take my word for it that those two are in fact fine. And that's just my snafu on the recording end of things. Another thing you might notice, especially here in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, is you'll notice that the color looks a little off between these two. Now it's true that the left-hand side is low detail. These were also captured with different hardware capture cards. I actually have two external capture cards now, one of which is an Avermedia 4K gamer capture card, and the other is my Elgato HD60S capture card, and it turns out their color spaces are set differently, go figure. Now granted, the detail settings are different, but even when the screen goes black, you'll notice that the colors aren't quite the same. That's to do with the capture cards. This isn't necessarily what it looks like on the machine itself. Now that I've noticed that there is in fact a difference, I'm gonna pay more attention to the color space of the capturing process on my external computer. I actually had both of these capture cards plugged into the Acer Predator Helios 300 2018 edition gaming laptop, the one with the uh, six core 12 thread processor. That's the computer that actually captured this video because there's no loss due to having run the capture because that was all done externally. The HDMI out from the computer went to the capture card, then from the capture card to the monitor, so the computer doesn't even know it's being recorded. It is running MS Afterburner and that uses like, you know, 1% maybe of the CPU power, but it doesn't really affect anything else in any meaningful way because the benchmark is the built-in benchmark and well, that is what it is. Now we're almost at the end of this and you can easily, obviously, bluntly see the performance difference. 1080p, 100% scale between integrated graphics and a dedicated graphics card. Even with low detail, this is not playable on Shadow of the Tomb Raider by any stretch of the definition, not even close. Now we can lower the resolution and that does help. And I did test that, give me a second, we'll get there. I did test that. But Shadow of the Tomb Raider needs a dedicated graphics card. Vega 11 is, this is the end of the line for it. If you really wanna play AAA games, yeah, you can, but a boy, oh boy, is this brutally bad get an RX 580, it really is the way to do it.
So that brings us to the end of these benchmarks. I've got the average FPS chart here for you. Let me know what you think about the game choices and what else you might like to see. 61 frames per second versus 120 in F1 2017. That is a doubling of frame rate and going from low to high detail. 47 to 95 frames per second in Forza Horizon 4. Again, a doubling of performance and going from low to high detail. Motorsport 7 wasn't quite a doubling from 63 to 100, but that's an older game. Rainbow Six Siege, holy smokes, 72 to 171. If you're a serious Siege player, if you're a competitive player, I hope you're not playing on integrated graphics because this thing is a mile and a half of difference. And remember, that's low to high detail. And then Shadow of the Tomb Raider, 63 frames per second, 1080p, high detail is absolutely playable. 29 is not. This game is not functional at 1080p on Vega 11. Now we have the minimum frame rates, and you can see here that we get down to 50 on Shadow of the Tomb Raider with the dedicated add-in card, and the rest are all well above 60. The RX 580 remains the best value 1080p gaming card today. It isn't going to hold it tremendously long, that's what the next generation of cards are for. You could either get a Vega 56 or you could get a RTX 2060 or a GTX uh, 1070 Ti, for example. But if you want to play games today right now and you're not worried about the next three years, the RX 580 is where it's at. And included, just for the sake of completeness, we have maximum frame rates. Yes, you see that correctly. Several games did not even reach a maximum FPS of 60 on the integrated graphics, but they are all above 100 on the RX 580. Well, there you have it, folks. That was a lot of testing and a lot of benchmarks done on this card, as well as the Vega 11 graphics. Like I said earlier in the video, I got to give a huge shout out to the Vega 11 graphics. No, they're not perfect. No, they won't play everything at 1080p high. Far from it. But the fact that they play these games at all is remarkable. Integrated graphics have come a long way in the past couple of years. Want better performance? Drop an under $200 graphics card in and get amazing performance. I've recently done two videos on the new RTX 2060, and in one of those videos, I called it the new 1080p Gaming King. It is. It is dramatically faster at 1080p than the RX 580 is, but for a lot more money. The Value King at 1080p remains the RX 580, especially if you value the free games that currently come with it. That's a limited time offer, but if those are still available, you can check using those links down in the description, then this thing is just an incredible value for the money. And anybody owning a Ryzen 5 or even a Ryzen 3 machine would be wise to take a close, close look at an RX 580. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions, comments, thoughts, feedback, suggestions, ideas, that's what the comment section is for. Please hit the bell notification icon next to the subscribe button to actually be notified when new videos come out. Please check the links in the video description, links to Amazon and Newegg for all the products I've shown here, links to the full build video series and other benchmarks that I've done on that computer down there as well, links to my social media, Twitch, Twitter, Discord, and a variety of other things. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you next time.